What's up guys, welcome to Supercars of London and my one month review with the Mercedes AMG GTS. Now this first month has been completely different to any other of the first months that I've had owning a brand new car. I have pretty much driven on every single possible road that I feel that I could potentially come across when driving this car. I have driven it in the mountains in the south of Germany and Austria. I have driven it in the hills in the south of France. I've also driven it in the tight, twisty underground car park roads of Monaco. But as well, I've driven on some pretty unforgiving roads here in the UK where the road surface just isn't as good as some of the other countries in Europe. So with no more boring talk from the outside of the car, I'm just going to jump in the driver's seat. Let's go for a drive and see where we end up. What better place to start the video than a petrol station? 70 litre tank. 75 pounds worth of fuel into the car we go. Let's kick this video off a 30 day summary or review that kickstarts my ownership of the AMG GTS. And of course, I want to make this video and I want to continue documenting what it is like to own this car to bring you guys along with the journey of owning this car, potentially falling in love with it but just following its journey as it gets transformed further and further into a car that I originally envisaged and had help from you guys as well from the AMG modification video where all of you suggested all of the different modifications. Let's see where this day takes me. To kick things off, every time I start this car, it starts in comfort mode, it relaxes me into driving this car in a very comfortable way and it just makes me happy. It makes me be prepared for the journey. Comfort mode, shuts the exhaust valves, softens everything. I've got very light steering around the cities and around town. Oh, look at that, Civic Type R. It's quite nice. But most importantly, all of the other modern technologies that we've got with the parking sensors, the rear reversing cameras, helps me when I'm moving around town with the big bonnet that I've got ahead of me. And when I'm driving it at low speeds, it does feel really big. And as soon as I start picking up the speed going on the motorways or through the country lanes, everything in the car just seems to shrink a little bit, which makes the whole package and the whole driving experience just that little bit more enjoyable when you don't have to worry just how wide this car is. Because it is crazy wide, but it just doesn't feel it some of the time. Which I suppose is one of the really good things about driving this around town, is it's not as intimidating as it looks from the outside. Enough of the boring, slow driving, town driving, I know this car is capable of being a very good city cruiser. Yes, the fuel economy isn't that great, but start-stop at least helps a little bit. But, as a driving car, comfort mode is not where you want to sit. You want to move it up to sport, which basically holds the gear ratios just that little bit longer, stiffens up the suspension, the exhaust valves stay shut, which is an interesting proposition for me driving it in sport. But. I can flick it into manual with the uh, tap of a paddle and the throttle response becomes a lot more active and also a lot more ready to go and the 503 brake horsepower, 510 PS becomes a lot more available. I'll be completely honest, I don't think I've completed a full mile driving it in sport. And this goes back to the A45 AMG that I drove. It just isn't really necessary. I haven't completely looked up into what it changes about the car. But if you want to go that little bit more aggressive, then you flick it into sport plus and immediately the car downshifts, the valves turn on, and all of a sudden you feel like you've got thunder right in front of you. AMG exhaust note that really does 
sound like thunder, and then the crackles on the overrun, just like lightning. And this is what this car is all about, the bi-turbo V8. Rumbling out of the back, rear wheel drive, instant power. And then this is where all of these buttons down here come into play. I can flick it into manual and have it completely in manual all the time. If I'm still in Sport Plus mode and I don't want to take it out of it and I get caught in traffic, I can take off the automatic start-stop. I can firm up the suspension or I can take off the suspension just how I like it. And even at low speeds in Sport Plus, the steering is relatively light. But just like the Aventador SV that I drove at Southern Sky, <laughs> it comes to life pretty quickly, and this car becomes exactly what Mercedes built it to be. A super GT car that when you want it to be, it is a crazy, crazy sports car. Comfort mode makes this car very easy to drive, very easy to live with, and also very manageable in the town, but also on the motorways as well. It's kind of like cruising around, perfect GT car. Sport, I would probably say, is a, is a mode that I would never go in. Sport Plus, very exciting. If we flick it into race mode, the revs on this car just become pretty amazing. If I take it out of manual, it basically thinks I'm on the racetrack. <laughs> See what I mean? <laughs> but if I drive this car in race mode, in automatic, this car calculates exactly my driving style to change gear exactly when it needs to. for the downshift there it is the gearbox on this car <laughs> what I was saying was the gearbox on this car is so good it never gets the wrong gear and the just wants to interrupt me every time that I'm trying to say something. This car always puts a smile on my face. It is so easy to drive every single day. And putting the miles that I've already put on it, to the motorway one of the best places that this car sits and we did quite a lot of motorway miles on our European trip so what better place to be I suppose to kick off some of the quickfire Q&A's that you guys have sent in through Twitter and Instagram about this car what it's like to own have I missed my Lamborghini and how long do I plan on keeping the car Samuel Mills on Twitter has asked if I could change one thing about the AMG what would it be and let's go back to when Mercedes launched the car. I didn't like it, I thought it was too soft and not a worthy replacement of the SLS. I didn't particularly like the SLS either. So it was crazy for me six, seven months later, having seen a few on the road, watched some reviews on cars and I started to fall in love with it. But I fell in love with the car, the engine, the interior more than I did the exterior. So as if you've seen the modification video, the one thing that I would probably change is to make the exterior a little bit more aggressive and sharper than what it currently looks like. Steny10 on Twitter has asked, when am I gonna take it drifting? <laughs> 
of course, being a rear wheel drive car and being an AMG, this car enjoys going sideways quite a lot. When am I gonna go drifting? I would love to learn how to drift, how to control a car on oversteer, go on a skid pan, take this car there as well so that I can learn the limits of this car with traction control off. Obviously, I can't do it on public roads because it is just unsafe. The car will probably be out of control around 90% of the time, and it's illegal as well. So I definitely wanna take it drifting. Over the summer, I'm gonna be looking up ways in which I can go to car control lessons, drifting lessons, whatever it is. I definitely want to take this car there and I want to learn about how to control a rear wheel drive car when it's on oversteer. Jan Piatek, I think that's how you pronounce the name and I'm sorry if that's not, has asked whether this was the perfect European cruiser. If I went on another road trip, would I pick this car again? 100%. If you've driven this car, if you've been in this car and you've been in the car with the comfort seats and I'm hoping to do a video with another AMG GTS owner in the coming days, it is just the comfiest car. I never had back pain. I never had any sort of body pain doing hundreds, thousands of miles in this car. It covered the miles effortlessly. The cruise control on this car is phenomenal. We've got a good question here from Yucho Glay underscore official through Instagram, who's asked why I didn't get the Edition 1. And the Edition 1 is basically the limited version AMG GTS. It comes with a fixed wing, it comes with a carbon roof, it comes with a pretty good spec, it also comes with the AMG Sports bucket seats. From an exterior point of view, it's a little bit more aggressive as well. We've got a front splitter, some side skirts, and it does look good. The one reason that I didn't want to get the Edition 1 was because it's a limited car, it's going to be as mileage sensitive as my Lamborghini was, and that was the one thing that scared me a little bit about driving the Lamborghini was just how the depreciation is going to be if I drove that car on more than one road trip. So the mileage was an important thing as well, but everything on the exterior, the fixed wing, is a Mercedes OEM factory part. And obviously, me being me and whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, I wanted to make it a bit more unique than just an Edition 1, which is why I thought that I would go for it in a GTS, which is the one below, but have more options to play with when it comes to modifying the car. Jonathan May has asked a very good question that I had to think about. When I saw the question, I really had to think about it. His question was, if the AMG GTS didn't exist, what car would you have gone for to replace the Lamborghini? And I think, based on how close I got to actually buying the car before pulling out, knowing just how much money I could potentially lose with the Audi R8 V10 Plus. It's a very cool car. It's starting to grow on people. I've seen a lot on Instagram. I've seen a lot driving about, and people are starting to realize that that car is as good, if not better than a Lamborghini Huracan, but also looks just as good, looks just as aggressive. I've seen a couple on the road. They do look great, but I think once we start seeing some really cool specs, it is gonna be a really good looking car and one now that you can pick them up for £120,000. In the grand scheme of things, looking at Hurricane prices, it is an absolute bargain. You're getting so much car for your money. It's a, like a Riviera Blue RS6. <laughs> Mercedes thought about how do we make our car work well in the city, and I think they have thought about pretty much everything. They've covered everything because it just works everywhere. It works everywhere and it's just, I cannot believe that if someone had said to me 18 months ago, you are going to own a Mercedes AMG GTS and you are gonna be talking about it like this, like this, like this, and you're gonna fall in love with that car after selling a Lamborghini, I would have absolutely loved anyone's face who would have told me that because I didn't like the car I didn't like this car and of course the Lamborghini dream was so important to me and having driven the Aventador SV I still think the Lamborghini dream is alive I still think it is there I still think that I'm yet to experience and discover the real Lamborghini dream which I think is V12 so that, 
I suppose is something that I've realised since driving the Aventador SV. But going back to the Mercedes, because this is what this video is all about, living with the Mercedes for one month, incredibly easy, incredibly comfortable, not stressful at all, and this car makes me very, very happy, and I'm very excited to see what adventures I get up to in this car, with this car, and what happens to this car with modifications. I'm still deciding, I'm still working on it, and I'm still reading all of your comments as to what you want to see from this car. Do you want to see a new color? Do you want to see aftermarket wheels? I'm going to try and cover pretty much everything and hopefully create the coolest AMG GTS that anyone has ever seen. And I know that's going to be difficult because Team Galag <laughs> are currently balling around in a GT3 spec road legal AMG GTS. So maybe the second coolest. 